All right, this video is on the inverse trig functions for sine, cosine, and tangent. So to begin, let's remember what the graph of sine x looked like. All right? So the graph of sine x is not a one-to-one -one function. It does not pass the horizontal line test. And don't forget, we can't talk about an inverse function unless we have a one-to-one -one function. So what we're going to end up doing is restricting the domain on this graph here to the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So literally, we're going to chop it off there and there, and only look at the stuff in the middle. When we do that, we definitely have a one-to-one -one function. All right, and the graph of the inverse function would look like this. All right, so this point pi over 2 comma 1 right there becomes 1 comma pi over 2 over here on the inverse function, because remember the x and y parts of the ordered pairs switch places going from a function to its inverse function. So negative pi over 2 comma negative 1 becomes negative 1 comma negative pi over 2 down here. Now if you do that for all the ordered pairs in between this interval up here between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 and connect the dots you'll get this nice looking curve. All right, so this would be the graph of the inverse sine function. Yeah, we could have restricted the domain anywhere, um, but uh, this is typically where it is restricted. So that this is the one you'll see most common is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right, so there's some notation to note. This is the notation for inverse sine. We'll have y equals um, inverse sine of x. It'll also be referred to as y equals arc sine of x. Having said that, this, you might see this notation, y equals arc sine of x. Or you might even just see y equals a sine of x, depending on your instructor, depending on your book. Um, remember this negative 1 up here, that's function notation. That, does not, that is not an exponent. It does not mean 1 divided by sine of x. All right, so it's going back to our function notation, f, f inverse of x type stuff. All right? So one of these three notations will be used. Um, you'll just have to make note of which one you're using in class. All right, so here's our note inverse sine function. y equals arc sine of x means that x equals sine y for, well, y has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. I mean, that's kind of the formal idea here, but I think this note might be a little more helpful. We can think of y equals arc sine of x as y is the number in this interval between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, also including negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, whose sine is x. So in other words, we're looking for an angle. You can kind of think of it that way. We're looking for an angle whose sine is x. All right, so let's, let's look at an example. All right, so y equals the arc sine of the square root of 3 over 2. So we're looking for a number that's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 whose sine is the square root of 3 over 2. That's what that's saying. All right, well, that would be pi over 3. This is where knowing that unit circle comes in handy, right? The sine of pi over 3 is, this, is equal to the square root of 3 over 2, right? All right, what about this one? y equals the arc sine of negative square root of 2 over 2. Now remember, you're looking for a number between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 whose sine is negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so picture your unit circle again. Okay, so you're looking at quadrants 4 and quadrants 1, right? That's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And so what angle has a sine that's negative the square root of 2 over 2? Be careful, right? It's negative pi over 4, right? You can't say 7 pi over 4 because 7 pi over 4 is not in the interval be um, uh, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, right? So we're using like negative angles now, right? So keep that in mind. All right, one more. What about this one? Y equals the arc sine of 3. All right, so we're looking for some, some number between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 whose sine is 3. Well, there are no real numbers whose sine is 3 because sine goes between 1 and negative 1. All right, so this does not exist using real numbers. Right, if you get into complex numbers and imaginary numbers, then yes, you, uh, um, you, you can find those out. But right now, we're just going to stick with real numbers. All right, so does that make sense? All right, so let's, uh, let's go into cosine. All right, so there's the graph of cosine. We're going to restrict the domain on cosine as well to be between 0 and pi. When we do that, we have a 1 to 1 function. And then its graph, when you do switch all the ordered pairs, the graph looks like this. All right? So it starts at negative 1, comma pi, and then goes through 0 pi over 2, and then comes down to 1 comma 0. All right? And the notation we're going to use for arc cosine is cos negative 1, right? x, so arc cosine of x, or you might see it literally arc cosine or just a cosine. And again, depending on your instructor or your textbook, you have to be careful of which notation to use. So 
the notation y equals arc cosine means that x is equal to cosine y, as long as y is between 0 and pi. Right, so the little note this time would be, we can think of y equals arc cosine of x as y is the number in the interval 0 to pi, 0 and pi are included, whose cosine is this x value. So again, we're looking for an angle whose cosine is x. All right, so here's, here's an example. Find the arc cosine of 1 half. All right, so <clears throat> you're looking for a number between 0 and pi, including 0 and pi, whose cosine is 1 half. Well, what would that be? Well, y equals pi over 3. Okay, unit circle. Cosine of pi over 3 is equal to a half. Pi over 3 is definitely in the interval between 0 and pi. What about y equals the arc cosine of negative the square root of 2 over 2? All right, so in, in the interval 0 to pi, so now picture unit circle. You're in quadrants 1 and 2, right? You're up here in the upper half of the circle. Um, and so you're looking for a number whose cosine is negative the square root of 2 over 2. Well, that would be, everybody get it? 3 pi over 4, right? Because the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2. And 3 pi over 4 is in the interval here, 0 to pi. All right? Okay, let's do tangent. All right, so there's the graph of tangent. We've got these asymptotes, right? Okay, so restricting the domain to, again, be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, and then um, switching the x and y order pairs around, your asymptotes are going to switch to become horizontal asymptotes, and then your graph's going to do the following. So the notation we have is tangent to the negative 1 of x, um, which is read the arc tangent, or the inverse tangent of x. Uh, arc tangent of x and y equals a tangent of x. Again, dependent on your book and your instructor. These are the most common ones used. All right, so there's the formal idea. y equals arc tangent of x means that x equals tangent of y for y between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And the note would be we can think of y equals arc tangent of x as y is the number in the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 whose tangent is x. Right, so an example of that would be um, theta, I'm using theta instead of y this time, theta equals the arc tangent of 1. Right, so what number between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 has a tangent that is equal to 1? Well, that would be theta equals pi over 4. All right, it's where sine and cosine are the same. And so what about the arc tangent of negative 1? So again, you're between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So this time, theta's got to be a negative pi over 4, right? Because you're, you're talking the, the quadrants 1 and quadrants 4, right? And again, you have to talk negative angles. All right, everybody kind of cool with that? Here's some examples on using these things that kind of come, can come in handy. All right, so analytically find the exact value of the following, the sine of the arc cosine of 1 fourth. Now remember, the arc cosine of 1 fourth, all this stuff right inside here that I'm circling, that's an angle. So we're literally going to take the sine of some angle, right? So everything's still cool. All right, so here's kind of one way to do it. Come off to the side here, and let's let um, u equal the arc cosine of 1 fourth. All right, then by our little definition that we had a minute ago, that means that the cosine of u has to equal one-fourth. All right, then you can draw a triangle. All right, there's u. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Doing that, that's going to make this leg over here be the square root of 15. Everybody see that? All right, and so then we can say, all right, so the sine of the arc cosine of 1 fourth is the same thing as the sine of, well we let u be this arc cosine of 1 fourth, so it's the same thing as the sine of u. And the sine of u would be square root of 15 over 4. Everybody see that? There's u, square root of 15 over 4. All right, so this idea of letting u equal you know, the angle here, and then use the definition to rewrite that as the cosine of u equals the 1 fourth, and then do your little right triangle Sakatoa thing, can come in quite handy. All right, so that's it for the inverse trig functions. Uh, study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.